Understanding the Treatment of Breast Cancer. This is one of a series of cancer videos that can be found on the website aboutcancer.com. This video is about the treatment decisions a woman needs to make once a diagnosis of breast cancer has been made. The best decisions will be made when the patient is consulting with a team of doctors, a surgeon, often a plastic surgeon, a radiation oncologist, and a medical oncologist to help guide the woman on these decisions. The woman needs to decide on three things, the type of surgery, whether to have a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, whether adjuvant chemotherapy or hormonal therapy is necessary or beneficial, and finally radiation and what to expect from radiation if that's recommended. The best and current advice can often be found on the website of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network at nccn.org. This is quite complicated and there's a simpler website for patients, nccn.com, that may be more accessible. The first decision then to be made is whether to have a lumpectomy or a mastectomy. Uh, most patients prefer a lumpectomy. The long-term survival and cure rates are as good if not better with a lumpectomy. There are some reasons to favor a mastectomy, however. If the cancer is very diffuse throughout the breast, if the surgeon cannot get clear surgical edges or margins, if the woman is genetically predisposed to bilateral breast cancer and needs bilateral mastectomies. At the time of the lumpectomy, the surgeon removes the tumor with a small rim of normal tissue and often will do a sentinel lymph node biopsy at the same time. If the sentinel lymph nodes are involved, it may be necessary for the surgeon to remove additional lymph nodes so-called level 1 or 2 axillary node dissection. At the lumpectomy, he attempts to remove the cancer with a small rim of normal tissue and the pathologist will look for clear margins. The toughest decision then often is the benefit or necessity of adjuvant hormone therapy versus chemotherapy. Again, the NCCN guidelines are very detailed and current and the patient may wish to have her medical oncologist pull up the current NCCN guidelines and review these with her. It's based on the stage of the tumor, the hormone status, the HER2 status, often a genetic profile may be beneficial, such as Oncotype DX, to determine if hormone therapy is strong enough or if chemotherapy is necessary. It may be worthwhile to pull up one of the online breast calculators, such as Adjuvant Online, and have the physician review this with the patient. In the first situation, uh, shown an elderly woman with low-risk cancer, her survival in green is quite good without the benefit or necessity of hormone therapy or chemotherapy, and it's unlikely she would agree or need either. On the other hand, a young woman with high-risk cancer, the mortality here shown in red is quite high, and the benefits from third-generation chemo shown in yellow are quite good, and this patient almost assuredly would agree to chemotherapy. These guidelines are available. If radiation is done, it's generally given after completing chemotherapy and would be the final step. The first step in radiation is called the simulation. The patient has a CAT scan and her breast and chest wall are pulled into the computer for reconstruction. This would show the cancer region in red, the radiation cloud in green. This is done three-dimensionally as shown here to ensure that the radiation does not go too deep and hit the heart or the lung. The technique initially is to treat the whole breast from side to side. This is called external beam radiation. The radiation skims over the surface of the chest wall to avoid hitting the heart or the lung. The treatments are generally given daily, Monday through Friday, for five to six weeks. The technique is to treat the whole breast, shown in red, for five weeks and then a boost dose, the blue circle, for the last week. If the axillary nodes are involved, it may be necessary to include the supracavicular lymph nodes. The upper yellow box is shown. Again, the technique, the first phase, five weeks in blue, the boost field in yellow for the last week. The breast for phase one is using x-rays. The CAT scan will ensure that the radiation does not penetrate too deep. And the boost will often be given with electron beam that can come in straight on because it will not penetrate deeply through the breast 
and will not hit the heart or the lung. Some patients may benefit from partial breast radiation, such as a balloon, a mammocyte, or other techniques similar to this. This is shown on the website. The side effects of breast radiation, primarily radiation dermatitis. The breast gets sunburned, the breast can be tender, tiredness, fatigue, even lightheadedness, and arm swelling can occur. The side effects on the skin often show up over the last week of treatment and generally heal up quickly. Most women have no long-term skin changes from the radiation. The other long-term side effects, a small risk of arm swelling, a small risk of scarring in the lung. The risk of causing a cancer or nerve damage is extremely low. All the details on all these subjects can be found on the website aboutcancer.com and directions to the NCCN guidelines and the other breast calculators can be accessed through that website as well as the other cancer videos.